It's Shelly Chapman of EatRelateLove.com, and this is the second part of Eat What You Love, a four-part series designed to help you explore the foods that feed your best life. So as you know, Eat What You Love is an acronym, love being the acronym. And then the last video we focused on L, which was about foods that give you life eating foods that are directly from the earth, have not been processed or have experienced minimal processing, and have not been heated above a certain temperature. And so incorporating more of those raw live foods into your diet so that you can begin to feel the energy that life brings and use your food as a source of medicine to do that. And of course, since we all love desserts and we have a sweet tooth inside of us, then I explored a dessert that was high percentage live and raw in nature so that you could be able to understand what it is to have something sweet and satisfying but also life granting. So in this particular segment, oh, we're talking about obedience. Now this is a huge topic because obedience is one of those things that we tend to get wrong. We're here thinking that we need to obe we need to be obedient to a diet. We need to be disciplined around food when we have it wrong. This is not about being obedient to a diet that you prescribe to, whether that's Atkins or veganism or the the 30-day lemonade fast, whatever it is that you think it is that you need to do. That's not what it's about. Food is here to serve you. Food is here to be obedient to you. Food is here to grant you the energy that you need to thrive through your day. And so we're going to take a different look at obedience. So we're moving the discipline, the obedience from ourselves and making ourselves the victim of food and we're moving in towards mastery and yeah. saying, I only eat foods that are obedient to my body, to my being, to the energy that I need. So what does that mean exactly? How does that look? What that means is that you start to pay serious attention to what you eat and how it affects you. So foods that you're allergic to are not obedient to your body. That's a perfect example. And you don't eat those because you know that you don't want to experience that allergic reaction, whether it's swelling or itching or hives. It's unpleasant. You don't want to experience it. But there are some foods that are more subtle in um, our body's inability to tolerate them. And so it's important to sort of hone in. And there are many tests that you can do. This particular video is not about the tests that you can do to find out which foods that are not obedient to your body, but it's about paying attention as you eat to what you eat and then building a diet that is completely obedient to your energetic being. So in this particular video, I'm going to focus on creating a uh, dairy-free, wheat-free, um, sugar-free, as in the sugar like the refined sugar-free, egg-free, um, uh, animal product-free dessert, okay? So, um, and again, this is about obedience. This is about eating foods that are alive because the truth is a lot of people have allergies to nuts. A lot of people have allergies to animal products. A lot of people have allergies to sugar. As a matter of fact, most of you have allergies to sugar that you're not even aware of because of how it operates when it gets into your body. And we're talking about not sweet, not things that are sweet. We're talking about sugar as in the white sugar, the processed sugar that you get in that big old bag that seems like such a great value but it's not a great value for your health down the line. All right, so we're gonna use sweetener, obviously, it's a dessert, but we're gonna explore the range of sweeteners that you can use um, so that you don't have those allergic symptoms and those intolerances. So ways to tell that your food that you're eating is not obedient to your body is by how you feel after you eat. If you itch, if you feel lethargic, if you feel swollen, if you feel uh, mucusy, if you feel nauseous, if you feel any of these sort of physical symptoms, and the truth is you've been eating a certain way for so long that you're probably not even aware of how these foods are affecting your body, which is why it's important to begin to eat consciously. Yeah, eat consciously, relate honestly, love abundantly, eat, relate, love. So it's important to eat consciously. And eating consciously means that when you sit down to eat, you're bringing all of you to the table so you can feel what you're experiencing. So in today's dessert, you won't have to worry about anything because it's amazing. And it is one of those foods that when you eat it, you're like, wow, I didn't realize this could be so delicious. Oh my goodness. So um, that's obedience. That's the second part of eat what you love. 
And I want you to take the time the next time you go sit down and eat, just take the time and feel what you feel. Feel what's happening in your body and pay attention. Pay close attention. Keep a journal. Write down the foods that are not obedient to your body because those foods should not be entering anymore. If they're not obedient, they need to stay outside. And then start keeping track of the foods that are obedient to your body, the foods that do make you feel alive, the foods that give, do give you energy, the foods that make you feel whole and healed. And you want to incorporate more of those into your diet. So today we're making a cardamom rose cantaloupe trifle. So freaking delicious. I'm excited. So um, a lot of these flavors are Middle Eastern, and so I'm bringing these Middle Eastern flavors and then incorporating it into a traditional, really it's like an English dessert, trifle. So trifle is generally layers of cake, cream, generally whipped cream, so dairy, and berries. And so what we're going to do instead of using whipped cream from a cow, we're going to use coconut cream, all right? So we have that getting ready. Um, and in the last uh, segment of Eat What You Love in the L, I showed you how to make coconut cream. So if you want a refresher on that, just go back to the last video and you can see, but we're going to use that. And what we're going to do is we're going to flavor our coconut cream with cardamom, and then we're going to um, flavor our, our cantaloupe with the rose water, and then we're going to stack all that together. So here I have a good bit of coconut cream, and of course it's a white bowl, but you can kind of see it. You can see it here in the beater as well. So I have some coconut cream, which I took from a bottle, and I'm just going to stir it around here. And I need to stir it because I've been keeping it in the freezer, in the refrigerator, um, so that it could kind of thicken up. Because since it is cream, depending on the temperature, it can be a little softer or it can be a little harder. And I wanted this one for this dessert to be a little harder. And so you can see, let me bring it. You see that, how thick that is? Wow, amazing, yeah? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of brown rice syrup and cardamom and heat that together in this pan. That's going to be my sweetener. And I'm going to add that to the coconut cream. Cardamom is this right here. It's a spice that you can use, and it's right here. You can see that. Let me get it a little closer. Perfect. So what happens is one of these seeds, the actual spice is inside the seed. Now you can cook with whole cardamom. You'll generally see that, say for example, in a Moroccan tagine, where you're making a stew and you throw the whole seeds in there. You'll see it in Indian cooking as well, where they throw the entire seed in there and as it cooks, it gives off its aroma, but it's not something you eat. You would remove it or just eat around it, much like you wouldn't eat a bay leaf, but it's there for seasoning. Um, so what happens is you open up the seed. Let me see if I can show that. Yeah, you see, you open up the seed, and inside are the actual um, seeds that give you the spice that you need. And this is when you buy cardamom powder. Get that there. You see that? When you buy cardamom powder, you're actually buying these little teeny black seeds, and they're ground up. So that's the cardamom powder. But... I prefer, because cardamom powder is such a strong, intense flavor, and it can lose its intensity over time with most dried spices because they're already out, they're out of their element, so they become less potent over time, I prefer to buy the cardamom seeds fresh and then pound them myself. And when I pound them, I get this. Let me see. And that's what you get. So now our mixture is completely heated, it's thorough, and I know that it's heated enough, one, I can smell the cardamom, but also the brown rice syrup itself begins to become a little um, uh, more flexible, it moves easier, unlike when you first take it out, it's very much like molasses, but when it's heated, those molecules sort of soften and bounce around a bit more, so it's able to move a lot easier. So that's when I know that it's ready. Now, you know that I don't give measurements. I'm not a fan of giving measurements because the idea here is not to exactly reproduce and replicate what I'm making. The idea is to take what I'm making and then apply it as it makes sense for your particular diet. So if you, I know that you want to know, so I'll tell you. But I use about one teaspoon of crushed cardamom and about a heaping tablespoon of brown rice syrup. And I'm going to add that to my coconut um, cream. So now my coconut cream is all finished. I'm going to show you a close-up. And you can see the specks of the cardamom inside. And then I can show you what it looks like. Look at that. Beautiful. And as I always say, check it as you're going along. 
So if you find that it's not sweet enough, then add some more brown rice syrup or agave, whatever sweetener that you feel like best suits your particular body and your energetic being, then use that, okay? Next, we want to go with a cantaloupe. So remember, this is a cantaloupe rose cardamom. So we're having the flavors of rose and cardamom in there. So I have rose water. And rose water is something that you can use as a beauty product, but it's also edible. So um, you can use rose water on your skin. It's a natural softener. You can use it in your hair. Um, even just sometimes in the, in the summer, I'll put it in a spray bottle and carry it around and spray myself with it when I get too hot. And it really soothes me and refreshes me and just helps cool me down. But I use it in my food as well. It's a great addition to desserts, baked goods. If you've ever had like rose flavored ice, um, icing or a uh, cake, um, even in fruit, it's amazing. So uh, you can get this in the international market at Whole Foods, um, in the international aisle, excuse me, at Whole Foods or any Indian store, Mediterranean store for sure. It's probably cheaper if you go to an Indian or Mediterranean store to buy it. So I have about a cup of cantaloupe, and I want you to see how fine I diced it. Now, the reason why I diced it this fine is because, for me, texture is a huge part of eating. And I want to make sure that when I'm eating my food, it actually is palatable for me. I'm going to pour about a tablespoon of the rose water in there. Rose water is very strong, just like cardamom. So we're dealing with two strong flavors here, but I like it to be intense. If you feel like you want to tone down in the rose water, just probably try to start with a teaspoon, taste it, see how it feels, okay? This is something that you're going to be eating um, right away. Just know that the flavors will intensify the longer it sits. So when you eat it right away, you'll taste it. But if you prepare it ahead of time and then you start to um, serve it either the next day or even several hours after letting it sit in the refrigerator, those flavors will be intense in a good way. Let me try a spoonful of this. Mmm. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. I can definitely taste the rose. And I can taste the cantaloupe. It's a beautiful song. It's like this explosion of a colorful symphony of deliciousness in my mouth. I love it. And the last but not least is our cake portion. Now, I just baked these really quickly. Um, but again, I'm not giving you a recipe because this is not about how Shelly made the cake. It's finding out the cake that makes most sense for your body. So if you need a gluten-free cake, you know, if you need an eggless cake, these sort of things, and you just want to create two basic yellow cakes and this is like a cupcake essentially so you can see how big it is so it's like a, a larger size cupcake and that's really enough for this for this uh for the trifle that we're making so i'm going to go ahead and cut this also in little cubes and so we'll after i finish cutting it we'll begin to layer our trifle we're going to use our lovely mason jar to assemble the entire thing. Like I said in the last segment, I love using mason jars. One, because they're the perfect sort of individual portion if you're going on a picnic. It's, I know it's still winter right now, but if it is warm where you are, or warm whenever you see this video, and you're going on a picnic, you can just go ahead and put it in this, and it's beautiful. You can see the layers. You serve it to people. It feels really special. It's like their own particular dessert. And even for yourself, it's special. And you can also get smaller jars or larger jars. Just make it as big as you want, okay? There you have it, a perfectly obedient dessert. Rose, cardamom, cantaloupe, trifle, coconut cream, cake that you like that fits your body and honors your body. And that's it, it's that simple. Just start by eating the foods that make sense for your energetic being. You don't have to give up everything. You see, we have this beautiful dessert here. And trust me, it's decadent, it's rich, and it's filling, and it's satisfying. This is not a diet. This is not cutting out sugar and cutting out carbs. This is about eating what makes sense for you. Thank you so much for allowing me to 
guide you along and eat what you love. And I look forward to seeing you in the next segment when we talk about V. Take care. Bye-bye.